This is a question related to bomb calorimetry, which we often use for determining the energy changes involved in a very energetic chemical reaction, usually combustion reactions. In this case, we're looking at the combustion of vanillin, which is essentially one of the flavor components of the vanilla bean and what you would find in artificial vanilla extract. What we would do is we take 1.013 grams of this vanillin and essentially put it in a little bowl inside a rigid metal container full of oxygen. That little bowl has essentially a lighting mechanism so we can burn the vanillin. And what's going to happen is the heat from that burning is going to exit that rigid metal container through the walls of the metal container into a water bath in which the metal container is immersed. And it's that water bath that is going to see a temperature change because the heat will leave the combustion reaction and go into the water and other parts of the calorimeter, which might include a thermometer, a metal stirrer, and various other things. Because a bomb calorimeter has many different parts to it with many different substances, it makes little sense to talk about a specific or molar heat capacity for a bomb calorimeter. Instead, we're going to have just the overall heat capacity of the calorimeter, which we see is 4.90 kilojoules per Kelvin. Again, this is involving heat and temperature changes, so that really can just as easily be described as 4.90 kilojoules per degree Celsius. Again, the zero of the Kelvin and Celsius scales are in different places, but the size of the degrees aren't. And since these are temperature changes, the temperature change we would measure in Kelvin and the temperature change we would measure in degree Celsius would ultimately be the same. Now you can tell this calorimeter probably has a whole lot of water in it. My guess is at least a kilogram of it because, well, we would see that a gram of water requires 4.2 joules of energy to raise it one degree. And here we're talking about 4.9 kilojoules. That means we probably got about a thousand grams of water plus the other bits and pieces in the calorimeter. And that makes sense as well. These combustion reactions are going to give off a reasonably large amount of energy. So we want to have a large amount of water to accept all that energy so we can get a reasonable temperature change. In this case, a temperature change from 24.89 degrees Celsius to 30.09 degrees Celsius. Now this is the temperature change of the calorimeter. We want to take all this information and figure out the heat of combustion for vanillin. So what does it take when vanillin reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water, how much heat is that going to release? And we know it's going to be a release of things because when we burn stuff, it gives off heat. So that's going to help us in our intuition because that means our internal energy change, our heat of combustion, should end up being a negative number. And it shouldn't surprise us if it's in the range of hundreds to thousands of kilojoules per mole, because that's pretty typical for combustion reactions. We actually get a lot of energy out by burning stuff. So to deal with this problem, we're essentially going to use that idea of the first law of thermodynamics again, that we're going to break the universe into two pieces. The system is going to have some sort of heat change associated with it, but that's going to have to be matched by an equal but opposite energy change to the surroundings. In this case, the only energy change that's possible is heat transfer. Because again, we're doing this in a rigid container that can't change its volume. That means there's no work that's going to be possible. Any energy change has to be as heat in this particular case. Well, what's our system? Well, in this case, it's the chemical reaction we're interested in. Again, the system we tend to choose to be the thing that's happening in the universe that's of most interest. We're burning vanilla. We want to know what that heat of combustion is. Well, that's going to be our system then, the reaction. And what's our surroundings? Well, that's going to be the calorimeter. 
Technically, there's all the rest of the universe, including the room the calorimeter is in, the experimenters in the room, the moon, Mars, Jupiter, all the way out to the far corners of the universe. But in the time frame of the experiment, we can be pretty confident that the heat transfer is essentially localized to the bomb calorimeter because we have designed this particular piece of equipment to be insulated and to maintain that as long as possible until we've actually got our answer. Now we would have seen that heat changes can often be calculated by using the mass of a substance, its specific heat capacity, and its change in temperature. We've said, though, for this calorimeter, that doesn't make much sense because it's made of many, many different pieces. So in this case, what that means is the Q reaction equals the negative of just the heat capacity of the calorimeter times the change in temperature. And let's be careful. That's for the calorimeter as well. Which means the Q of the reaction is the negative of 4.90 kilojoules per degree Celsius and that's going to be our final temperature minus initial temperature again changes always where you finish compared to where you started we finish at 30.09 degrees Celsius we start at 24.89 degrees Celsius and so what we're going to see is our calorimeter undergoes a temperature increase. That shouldn't surprise us. We're burning stuff and that heat moves out into the water and other pieces of the calorimeter. That's no different than us standing by a burning fireplace and feeling all the heat coming off and our temperature getting nice and toasty warm. At this point in my problem solving video I had to make an edit because I made a math mistake. It happens. So going back and trying to check your math just to be sure always makes sense. So let's continue on where I hopefully don't make the mistake this time. We'll continue on with our calculation. Minus 4.90 kilojoules per degree Celsius. And that temperature change is 5.20 degrees Celsius. I'll admit the mistake I made was I said it was 6.20 degrees Celsius because I tried doing the calculation in my head instead of on my calculator. And that happens. So, now we can see that again, the Q of the reaction, again, it's negative because of that positive temperature change for the surroundings. That means the heat was given off by the system, which makes sense for a combustion reaction. How much heat was given off by that reaction? Well, it's the 4.90 kilojoules per degree Celsius of temperature change times the 5.20, and that's 25.48 kilojoules. Now the question asked us for the internal energy change for the reaction per mole of reaction. For bomb calorimetry problems, the Q of the reaction is an internal energy change for the reaction. There's only one way that energy is leaving the system in this case, it's in the form of heat. That means the products of the reaction, all that carbon dioxide and water that we made after we burned the stuff in oxygen, the vanillin, well, that carbon dioxide and water contains less energy in it overall than the vanillin and oxygen that we started with. Where'd that energy go? Into the surroundings, into the calorimeter. That's that heat that we actually just calculated. But we do have to be careful. We were asked per mole, and first thing we'll see is by keeping track of units, our math has told us that's kilojoules. That's because we actually don't know how much reaction actually took place yet. We know that we burned 1.013 grams of vanillin in our bomb calorimeter, but we also know in the problem that the molar mass of vanillin is 152.147 grams per mole. It's pretty obvious to tell we didn't burn a mole of vanillin, and so we can't talk about the molar combustion reaction. That energy release of 25.48 kilojoules is for about 1 150th of a mole. So in other words, we expect our actual molar amount to be about 150 times larger. But let's see how much larger it should actually be. If we want to turn this into a molar amount, what we're going to have to do is take Q reaction and divide it by the number of moles we actually burned. 
that's going to give us what we call the molar internal enthalpy change, which is symbolized often with a bar over the top, or you might see the letter M used here in subscript as well. So again, it's just really one is for the amount we had, one is for this other kind of more generalized amount, which of course is a mole, which makes sense in a chemical context. Which means that for us, delta R U bar equals the Q reaction we actually calculated, divided by the number of moles of vanillin we had. Well, we've got to figure out what that number of moles of vanillin was. It's the 1.013 grams of vanillin we had, divided by its molar mass of 152.147 grams per mole. Again, chemist toolbox calculation. You really should be at a point where you know how to do this and when it's kind of needed. 1.013 divided by 152.147. We're gonna see that instead of burning one mole of vanillin, we actually burned about 0.00666. Five, eight moles. And again, I'm not worrying about sig figs until the end. I'll kind of figure out at the end where that goes. So now our molar amount, of course, when I tilt things sideways, that doesn't always work out very nicely for me. But yeah, our molar amount is going to be that negative 25.48 kilojoules divided by 0.00. .00. 6658 moles of actual vanilla that we burned that is going to give us three thousand three hundred and twenty seven kilojoules per mole and of course let's be careful we got to remember that negative sign the burning is giving that off now, if we want to go by sig figs, we saw three sig figs here, three sig figs here. So really, we should say this is probably minus uh, 3.3 3 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3 kilojoules per mole. Now, the question is, does this make sense? Combustion reactions, we're taking large molecules with a whole lot of chemical bonds in it between carbon atoms and carbon and hydrogen and there's some oxygen. There's a lot of chemical bonds there. And when we burn stuff, we take those molecules in the presence of oxygen and we create much, much smaller molecules. Carbon dioxide with only two double bonds in it and water with only two single bonds in it. So breaking all those bonds releases a lot of energy. That's why combustion reactions are exothermic. They give off heat to the surroundings and they tend to give a lot of heat off to the surroundings. If you see combustion reactions, expect molar amounts of energy in the hundreds to thousands of kilojoules per mole range. That's because combustion reactions just give off a whole lot of energy and we all have experience that tells us that. I using my intuition with the previous answer I had, I got something like 4.28 times 10 to the three the last time I did this problem incorrectly because of the math mistake, and it seemed reasonable to me, so I didn't think about it, because again, your intuition can only go so far. When solving problems, if you have the time, just check the math of each of your steps again, just to be absolutely sure.